Uh, Councillor Ben Johnson. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, I uh, welcome the freeze in uh, council tax next year, and as Councillor Osborne has already made clear, uh, it's a decision that uh, a Labour administration would also have taken. Um, that's not to say that we uh, unreservedly back all the decisions taken by this administration in seeking uh, to make a council tax freeze possible. We would never, for example, have pursued uh, a policy such as pay to play an idea so bad that it made the front cover of national newspapers as well as the uh, Lord of the Conservative home website and cuts to the park police. Um, a council tax freeze right now is, is the very least we as a council can do to play uh, our part in helping families in this borough who are feeling the squeeze. And there's a, a bigger picture to this too, of course, and one in which our amendment is, is very much framed. Uh, a government which is making the wrong choices, squeezing families too hard, cutting and raising taxes too far and too fast, making times which are already hard for so many people an awful lot harder. VAT rise which is costing families with two kids uh, £450 a year, rising transport fares here in London and nationally on the, on the railways, uh, unfair changes to tax credits, all these things hitting working families hard. And this council has a responsibility to find whatever ways it can to help those families. A council tax freeze is part of that, but so is finding new ways, innovative ways of protecting the services that they rely on day to day, and that's what our amendment does. We recognise that difficult choices have to be made and all councils have to find savings, obviously, and as Councillor Osborne has also said, we have in committee meetings and here in the council chamber not opposed some of the savings that have been found. But if Labour was running Wandsworth, we would, have, we would have to find the same level of savings the current administration did, but would do so in markedly different ways some of the time. Uh, sensible reductions, as uh, Councillor Osborne has set out, in senior staff costs, in middle management, um, in uh, streamlining finance and administration. All these things would allow us to do more with the, the hard-earned money that residents give us. So, Councillor Morritt was talking about, uh, about competence and uh, about the bigger picture, as he sees it. Just leave you with one thought. When Labour left office, the, uh, the economy was recovering. We had some growth. Um, under the government that they support, <laughs> under the government that they support, the recovery is over. It's been choked off. Growth is virtually non-existent. Unemployment is at its highest level in 17 years. And as a result, he talked about leadership. As a result, his leader, who promised to eliminate the deficit by 2015 has already broken that promise and will have to borrow an additional £158 billion to fund the rising benefits bill caused by the unemployment for which he is partly responsible. No one in the majority party has any, any right whatsoever to lecture anyone on financial responsibility as long as they support the government that they do. So, my solution is the majority party should uh, start listening to the ideas, the sensible, meaningful proposals that we've come up with. Um, they, should, they should join us in looking for more savings to protect those frontline services, to put families first, and join us in calling on their Chancellor and their Prime Minister to uh, temporarily reverse the, uh, the VAT rise, which is costing hard-working families £450 a year. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. Councillor Cooper. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, so, a very short contribution from Councillor Senior introducing the debate, and then a, a long contribution from um, Councillor Morritt, um, which seemed to revolve around the word gimmick at some considerable length. Um, well, thank you very much for, for that contribution to, to my speech, uh, Councillor Morris. I, I thought you might be tweeting by this stage, um, although you just, you just stalk on Twitter, as far as I can tell, um, rather than actually doing any of your own tweets. Um, let's, have a look at our, let's have a look at our amendments. What, what are exactly the gimmicks that we're looking, looking at here? You know, in the last meeting, I said, uh, by the time we uh, leave the last meeting and come to this one, all the uh, members opposite would stand on their heads um, and rather than all supporting enormous rent rises, um, everyone would be welcoming um, freezes in council tax. Uh, and duly, um, the Conservative councillors here will be doing exactly that. 
But if you look at the end of our um, amendment, that is precisely what we're talking about. Um, the huge rents in this borough. Why can we not uh, increase rents only as far as the limit rent? You know, there's no reason for us to um, m make the massive increases that, that we are. What are the other gimmicks in here? Let's have a look at the first paragraph. Oh, yes, some streamlining of council functions. Gosh, what a gimmick that is. That's something that has saved huge amounts of money across the rest of the country, across councils, across the whole of London. All you need to do is look in the, uh, the booklet that comes out each year, setting out the arrangements for other councils around the rest of London to see that we have a vast number of departments and therefore directors uh, and overpaid individuals. Um, and we could streamline a lot further and reduce our staff costs. Um, and then we move on in the same uh, paragraph laden with gimmickry um, to talking about reconfiguring staff structures at the middle levels as well. Um, and we have a number of members of our group who've come up with some quite radical proposals um, in terms of uh, reducing the levels of padding in middle management, all with a view to maintaining frontline services, uh, which some people in this chamber appear to have no interest in. Because our final point, our final gimmick point in that first uh, paragraph uh, talks about a wholesale review of performance related pay. Uh, and that's an issue um, that we're going to come on to pay later on on this agenda. But there is absolutely no justification whatsoever in human resources terms for supporting performance related pay. It's been proven um, that it does not impact um, in the way that is expected. It, it has no uh, beneficial impacts at all and indeed um, it has become somewhat of a talking point um, for people in banks of late with a number of people rejecting their bonuses, their performance related bonuses and I can't think why that should be, oh perhaps because they didn't perform to the required standard. So why don't we chuck that out here as well. And Councillor Osborne is quite right to talk about the services that we would protect, those frontline services that we wish to prioritise. Councillor Moritz was sneering when he said, look after their people. But we are all elected by the people of this borough. We all have a personal, individual, joint and several responsibility as councillors here, all 60 of us, to look after our people, all people in this borough. Not just the rich people, not just those on middle incomes, not just the poor, but all people. And looking after education, young people, health, social care, community safety and policing surely should be at the top of the list of the areas that we would want to um, prioritise and protect. Councillor Johnson referred to the pay-to-play scheme, which thankfully at the moment appears to be off the cards. But we've also had a number of debates in this chamber about the parks police and policing of our parks. And there have been a number of members opposite who have reminded us of the fact that originally, um, possibly before some people in this chamber um, were uh, out of primary school, um, that a very long time ago that uh, some Labour councillors at that time might have opposed it. Well, we came round to believing that because we have the second largest amount of open space in London, that having good policing of our open spaces was a very important thing. And we still believe that. We still want to see a priority for community safety and policing across the whole of this borough. So, in conclusion, Madam Mayor, we feel that this amendment is one that has considerable merit and we commend it to every councillor here present. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cooper. Councillor Cook. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I find myself in the position of uh, agreeing with uh, Councillor Osborne uh, on the uh, importance of education. He might start with the economics classes for his party. Um, the idea that uh, the economy was recovering uh, when they left office is just so ridiculous, uh, really just doesn't uh, justify any further. For, uh, well, for pure, pure fantasy, pure fantasy. But anyway, let's, uh, let's, let's get on to the, uh, the, mat the matter at hand. Uh, if we'll uh, deal with the amendment, if we, if we may. Um, it had the feel, I thought, it's rather incoherent, put it kindly. Um, I thought it had the feel of something produced by a bunch of 13 people who really couldn't agree amongst themselves what they wanted to say. 
Uh, and so they've ended up with something that they could all just about sign up to, uh, but doesn't really convey any clear message at all. Um, and I really did have a, have a good chuckle uh, when, I, when I read through it uh, and read the, uh, the, uh, the line, foresight is a crucial part of a reasoned plan. Since it arrived at uh, 1636 this afternoon, uh, that clearly doesn't include getting their act together in preparation for full meetings of this council. If it was so important, why didn't we have it sooner? Everybody else could manage it. Uh, it rather negates their proposals, uh, such as they are, because they would attract much greater scrutiny, as they, as they deserve, uh, if we had time to do so. And it is rather reminiscent of uh, the ridiculously late proposal at a December meeting regarding the Parks Police, a parallel that perhaps Clancy Osborne didn't have in mind. Um, those proposals there, which it did suddenly, we didn't have the opportunity to look at carefully, arrived with barely 24 hours to go before the meeting, uh, and we have an echo of that here this evening, a couple of hours. So it really is uh, rather hard to take the suggestions too seriously in these circumstances. Uh, you can one imagine that the mess we'd be in a council or indeed any organisation uh, with more than one person was run like this? Uh, it's no wonder that they left the country and the public finances in such a state if that's the level of their organisational ability. Uh, rather, rather than putting constructive constructive ideas forward, they come up with meaningless, and I'll use the word gimmick because that's what it is, why did they wait to that very last minute uh, to, to produce this? Uh, and I suppose, really, the answer is that they fear detailed scrutiny because one thing that one can say when you look at this is it is completely lacking in any detail. But I, I, will, I will try to respond. Um, there is mention of the front line uh, as though there is money wasted uh, behind the scenes. Well, this council of all councils in the entire country uh, is, is one of the leanest, widely recognized as such, uh, and it's ridiculous to suggest that uh, we, are, we have got that balance wrong. Um, I like particularly the find additional ways uh, under, under 1A. Uh, well, I'm, I'm sure that the Finance Department will be returning to work tomorrow morning with renewed vision and vigour, um, uh, having been guided by that one. Um, Reconfigure staff structures. Um, again, as my colleague Councillor Cena mentioned, uh, it, it is happening uh, right from director level, right the way down through the organisation. There have been dramatic reorganisations of this council, uh, the like of which have not occurred in recent decades. Um, again, it's not telling us anything new. All budgets, likewise, are constantly under review. To come to the priorities, um, they're really pretty broad, aren't they? I mean, I think we can all agree they're important. There's no question about that. But this sort of vague and simplistic prioritization really is verging on meaningless. Um, the truth is, they are all important, but this sort of level of, of, of capture of non-detail, if I can put it like that, really makes very little contribution to understanding. And I would suggest that really what's happening here is they don't have any ideas of substance. Their approach, uh, I have to say, rather reminds me of those, uh, those, those pages we see in, uh, in many of our committee papers. Um, and we've got one tonight on page 76. Uh, this page is left intentionally blank. Uh, and we have one here. But at least, at least we get these in good time. Um, they, they could perhaps have put it on the back of the amendment sheet. Uh, that would have worked uh, rather well. <coughs> And this amendment has, has really very little to do with the council tax, uh, I would suggest. Um, the grim reality is, as my colleagues have touched on, that uh, we are in a very difficult position in this country and we have tough, tough choices to make. Um, we've heard that before, haven't we? Tough choices. But he didn't really make any, did he? Um, we've, we've seen the almighty mess they've left the country's finances in, and that is now... That is now... That... No, no, no not that... Uh, Ab absolutely, absolutely. Uh, as my colleagues have mentioned, um, the, the extent of the involvement of the banks, one has to look at regulation, who was in charge, who's watched it happen on. But above all, absolutely, absolutely above all, it was overspending. Even at the height of a boom, they were borrowing more money. Sheer madness. It comes back to those classes in economics that you guys need. Absolutely. Well, as I think, uh, I, think, um, I think William Hague said, they got it half right. <laughs> <laughs> as, uh, as my colleague, Councillor Senior, has described, the priorities of this council remain the prudent and sustainable, and that's the key word, sustainable management of our finances and the protection of the most vulnerable. That is also enormously important. And we'll take no lectures from the party opposite uh, that is principally responsible for the situation that we're now in. 
as we all know, we face serious financial challenges and they will go on for some time and we need to take a long-term approach. So in conclusion, Madam Mayor, we remain always open to ideas uh, and leaving aside uh, this evening's uh, manoeuvre, uh, we should allow that our friends opposite may well have ideas that deserve attention and we will always give them due consideration. I think it's just a shame on this occasion we haven't had time to do so or the detail to do so. Uh, and I urge that we support Councillor Senior. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cook. The matter now before the Council is the amendment proposed by Councillor Osborne and seconded by Councillor Ben Johnson in respect of the paragraph 15 of the Executive Report concerning the Budget and Council Tax for 2012-13. Please indicate by show of hands those for the amendment. Those against the amendment? Any abstentions? No. The result of the voting is 13 for, 40 against, no abstentions. The motion is therefore lost. The amendment is. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The motion now before the case is the adoption of the recommendation of paragraph 15 of the executive report concerning the budget and council tax for 2012-13. Please indicate by show of hands those for the motion. The same numbers. Same numbers. Agreed? Yeah. Against. Against. 13. Yeah. Yes. Forty. Forty. The result of the voting is 44 against 13. The motion is carried. Carried. <laughs>